Hello there and welcome to our Facebook Live. Last week was actually National Baking Week, so this week we thought we'd do some baking with a little bit of a twist yeah. because we come across a lot of people with different food intolerances. So we like to show you how to make some brownies that are absolutely delicious, but they're made without gluten and without dairy. So we're gonna show you the method, but I promise to post the ingredients and method online afterwards as well. Okay, so you did promise you're gonna show me how to do this. I did promise. Okay, so let's talk through the ingredients first. Okay. So in this one, we've got 150 ml of soya milk mm -hmm. and 150 ml of water and three teaspoons of vanilla extract. Okay, so you mix the, the soya milk with the water. I did, and I put the vanilla extract in there as okay. well. So okay. that's all ready. And then in this one, we put 225 grams of dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. Now, it's really important that you look at the ingredients on the back of the bar of dark chocolate because a lot of people that assume that mm. as it's dark chocolate there's no dairy in there mm. but quite often when you look at the ingredients even the cooking chocolate you'll find that there's a small amount of milk so it's really really important to find a dark chocolate that has no dairy in it at all and is this the very very dark chocolate like, like the 95 percent it's actually the 70 percent oh, okay and i i used the organic cooking chocolate for this one but i made sure it had no dairy okay and then that's combined, so this is the dairy-free butter that I'm using. So mm -hmm. this particular one is sunflower oil. Mm -hmm. And there's 180 grams of the butter in there as well. And then what we did earlier is we just put it all in the bowl together and then you kindly put it in the microwave for me until it had melted. Okay, and I guess by using cooking chocolate, when you melt it, it doesn't turn into, um, you know, sometimes when you melt it over the pot, mm -hmm. all of a sudden it becomes hard and crusty. Yes, no, so it's cooking a, chocolate, it's a better one than yes. the normal chocolate. But you could use normal chocolate, chocolate as well. Okay. So then you get a nice, thick, warm liquid with the butter and the chocolate. And don't worry if they separate a little bit. You can see in this one that the, the butter's just slightly mm. sitting on top. Mm. That's absolutely fine. They combine nicely when we put all the ingredients together. Okay, so I noticed, because you've got chocolate in there, mm -hmm. that's cocoa. That is cocoa. So isn't it overpowering? You'd be surprised. Is it? You need both to mm -hmm. get that real depth of flavour, you know, that lovely chocolatey, mm -hmm. sort of chewy flavour that you mm -hmm. get with a brownie. Mm -hmm. So actually, let's talk about our last ingredient. So in here, we've got 150 grams of caster sugar. So this time we're actually just all ordinary sugar is what we're putting in, but you could consider using something like xylitol okay. if you want a sugar replacement. Mm -hmm. um, that's much lower on the GI index, mm -hmm. and so it's a little bit healthier for you. So you can experiment using things like xylitol to sweeten it instead of sugar. If you're using a, li a liquid sugar, then you, you would need to experiment because With that, okay. this one very much relies on the liquid balance being exactly right. Otherwise, it, will, it won't go into that sort of wonderful cakey um, texture that you get in a brownie. Okay, so you mentioned you could use xylitol. What about coconut sugar? I haven't made it with coconut sugar, but that's something that people could experiment okay. with. Mm -hmm. I make um, some Anzac biscuits at home occasionally and I use coconut sugar instead of ordinary sugar in those mm -hmm. and that works really well. Okay. So I do find for baking that it is a particular mm. good option. Um, and then as you mentioned this indeed we've got 45 grams of cocoa powder. Now this is raw cocoa powder so it's unprocessed and it's organic and a lot of these ingredients you can get on Amazon if you can't find them in mm. the local shops. And then this one is oat flour. So we've got 75 grams of oat flour. Mm -hmm. I have tried to make them with a gluten-free flour that I found in the supermarket that was a combination of rice flour mm -hmm. and oat flour, mm -hmm. but the texture just wasn't oh, right. So for this you. it definitely needs okay. the oat flour. oat flour. 
Just coming back to the cocoa. Mm -hmm. So you said that's the raw organic cocoa. Yeah. I guess if it's the raw one, it's not as sweet as what you find the normal cocoa to be. It's actually really bitter. Okay. Yeah. Really bitter. So natural raw cocoa is really mm. bitter. Mm. Okay. Okay. So if you would like to combine the dry ingredients into mm -hmm. your bowl, And then while you're doing that, I am going to add the sugar. And as we just mix it. Yep, just mix them together. So I've mixed in the sugar. And now I'm going to add in the rest of my liquid. And it's best to add it little at a time? Um, I don't normally, but I have a slightly higher sided bowl and I just don't want to get the liquid all over your table. She says, splashing herself. And at this point, it will be very watery. Yeah, I was going to You're tell you. You're thinking, yeah, because you need the consistency to it that looks like it's like drinking chocolate. Yeah, it is very, very liquid at this point in time. So you mix now the cold ingredients with the warm ingredients. Yeah. Does it clot or not? No, it will just stay liquid because the um, chocolate and the butter have been melted in the microwave. You just get a, a slightly, if you fill the pan, you'll feel yeah. that it's just very slightly warm. So at this point, it will stay completely liquid. And now we're going to combine your ingredients with my ingredients. So I'm just going to put that in. Yep. And we'll take that spoon. and slowly mix this together. Is it best to use spatula? What if somebody has a cake mixer? I've only ever done this by hand. A lot of these things, it's, it's all about experimentation. Mm. Um, but that's the joy of making stuff yourself and, and making it at home because it's very wet it's it's actually just as easy to mix mm. it together mm. with a, a spatula it is very 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 runny and then what happens is it slowly dries out in the oven okay so now what we're we having for tea <laughs> we <we'll> have tea <laughs> absolutely Which is ideal because, as I told you, I'm busy detoxing, and I have, I have a small bit because there is natural. I mean, there is the sugar that's in there, but then I know now when um, making it, I can then replace it with xylitol. Yeah. I think I'll probably try the coconut sugar. Yeah, yeah, and you see could what experiment happens. with yeah. that and see see how it is. You might get a slightly different, richer flavour, but exactly. I'm sure it will work really well. Yeah. And I guess a co coconut won't be that overpowering because the chocolate will balance it out. Yeah, and I have noticed with the coconut sugar, it doesn't really have a very strong, um, it doesn't have a coconutty taste. Mm -hmm. It's actually more like a brown sugar, like a mascarpone sugar or something like that. And you don't need to, um, a lot of, with a lot of baking, you have to sift the flour mm -hmm. and sift the... Don't you don't have to do that. You don't have to You mentioned the brown sugar. Could one use brown sugar with this? Um, you could try it. I've only ever tried it with the caster sugar, mm. I have to admit. Um, and as I say, the first time I made it, I did make it without 
the um, the oat flour, yeah. and it wasn't. It, it was still very nice and chocolatey, and mm. it still made quite a nice dessert. Mm. But you didn't get that cakey consistency okay. of yeah. a brownie. It had a, a sort of slightly gooier consistency, okay. yeah. which yeah. actually made a really nice dessert with ice cream. I was going to say, I was just thinking <laughs> about that ice cream now, thinking, hmm, I should have nice with that. Mm -hmm. Saying somebody who's busy detoxing. <laughs> but I guess yeah, that does also your mind not. all the nice things that you can have. We should not have at this stage. Yeah. But the beauty of, of cooking at home is, is you can make some really nice treats. If you look up people like Helms, Hemsley and yeah. Hemsley, yeah. they make some really nice chocolatey flavour um, sweet treats. But they use coconut sugar, they use... Um, honey, all sorts of things that you can actually have a really nice treat mm. that satisfies a sweet mm. tooth that actually has some nice things like coconut and stuff in. So actually it doesn't give you that sugar rush yeah. of ordinary sugar. It, it, um, it, you don't get that sort of rush and then that the crash, crash afterwards. afterwards. Yeah. And it, it evens out in the body. Yeah. And I guess what's nice about it is that like you said, it's so much better making your own, but yeah. you also know the ingredients that you're putting into it. Absolutely. I mean, when you when you get a lot of ready-made things in the shops, they have to have preservatives in them mm. to hold the shelf life. Whereas when you're making stuff at home, you know exactly what's gone in it, yeah. and you're making it to be eaten straight away, so you don't have to put all the preservatives. And it's amazing. I mean, not just with baking. But making food generally, it's, mm. it's amazing how you can make stuff actually relatively quickly mm. and really, really tasty. Um, I recently made a prawn korma and I tried coconut rice mm. for the first time. And that was really nice. And you're doing yourself a nutritious, delicious mm. meal. But then I started looking, because I have to be careful how much gluten I have. Yeah. But I, I still have a little bit of a sweet tooth, so I started looking around for things that um, I could have that were perhaps gluten-free mm. or perhaps a little bit healthier. Mm. So I started experimenting with different flours and different sugars and dairy replacement. And I've got quite a few friends that are vegan and vegetarian yeah. as well, so just learning how to make stuff that they can have too. And, um, and I'm actually thinking now, Everything that is used, besides the sugar, and you can replace that, would be perfect for a vegan then as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Because you get the vegan chocolate as well. Yep. So you just yep. replace all your ingredients with the ingredients for vegans, and then you've got a vegan um, yep. chocolate brownie. I see why it's So a, a normal dark chocolate would be vegan anyway, because yeah. it doesn't have any dairy mm -hmm. in it. It's actually becoming quite smooth. Yes, it becomes very smooth. And you just make sure that if you've got any lumps, you just mm. press them against the side of the bowl and then they all disappear. And there we have the mixture all ready. And then the best sort of pan to use, um, this sort of size pan for this quantity is the best thing for, for brownies. Okay. So you want uh, rectangular or square, you want nice straight sides. Mm -hmm. And then we've just lined it with parchment paper and we've used some of the butter on the bottom of the parchment paper so that you're not stick. fighting yeah. with it and it yeah. just sticks nicely. And I normally do the parchment paper that way and then that way, so it naturally yeah. covers the corner without trying to twist okay. it around. Yeah. So it comes out nice and easy. And then yeah, it's just a case in. of pouring that in. I can see already my niece is going to have a look at this video and say, Mommy, guess what we're making? <laughs> So this recipe was actually given to me by a friend of mine who has her own catering business mm -hmm. called Halibo Catering. Mm -hmm. um, so also have a look at her website perhaps if you want more yes. inspiration. Yes. Or she does amazing cakes as well for weddings and parties.
saltines mm. and stuff like that. And there we go. And we have our brownie. So this will go into the oven. Yep. For how long? For about 30 minutes. And at what temperature? At about 180. 180. So you're looking to do it long and slow. And that way it, it um, takes out all the moisture mm -hmm. and you get that lovely cakey finish. Wow. Okay. So we're going to now take a break and we're going to put this in the oven and we'll bring you back bring it back and show you the finished results yeah. later maybe with a cup of coffee absolutely <laughs> here's our finished brownie that's been in the oven it smells great doesn't mm. it the whole flat it smells like chocolate, chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> so that's our finished item that's been in the oven for about half an hour half an hour on 180 80. and you can tell when it's done because the middle is nice and firm mm. And if you still get a sort of jelly-like wobble in the middle, you know it's not quite finished just yet, put it back so in you the can oven. tell. You yeah, can, yeah okay. just put it back in the oven. And so we're going to leave that to cool on a cooling rack, and then it's cut-up it, time and, and ready to serve. Yes, can't wait for my coffee with a brownie. <laughs> <laughs>